Good morning. Uh, I'm Elgin Farewell, the CEO of Terranet. Um, like my colleagues, I'm, uh, I'm here to talk about a story of uh, transformation in land registration services. Uh, I think you're going to hear that uh, uh, none of them were achieved overnight and none of them were achieved without challenges. Those challenges can be political, uh, policy, operational, technical, uh, and if you've ever worked in land registry, they certainly can be emotional. Um, I, uh, you know, while I'm here to talk about the Terranet experience, um, in many ways it's more about uh, the Ontario Land Registry staff that had the vision, the commitment, uh, and the leadership to make it all happen. In Ontario, meaningful transformation took almost a decade, and while both uh, the model that delivered the transformation as well as the services have, have continued to evolve over that decade, uh, since that decade, um, I'm here today to share the, the early Terranet story by setting the impetus for change, um, the strategy and the structure to address that need, and then talk a bit about some of the high-level lessons and, uh, and results that have been realized. Oops, wrong way. So a decade might sound like a long time, but, uh, but not so much if you think of, of it in the context of, uh, of a land registry service that had not changed in, in close to 200 years. Um, settlement, uh, European settlement started in the 1600s in Ontario, uh, but it wasn't until uh, 1795 that, uh, that provincial statutes were introduced uh, to establish land registry and land rights. At the time, um, land was administered under a deed system, which was a, a variation board from the, borrowed from the British. But in the late 1800s, Ontario adopted the, uh, the new Australian Torrens system for first grants to property. Now, while enhancing property rights um, for some, this also created disparity that would last for another 100 years for those that were still under the registry deed system. And over those hundred years, Ontario itself went through uh, profound change and growth. Initially, 80% of the Ontario population was rural in nature and was spread across a geographic area four times the size of Great Britain. So over 60 registry offices, uh, county-based registry offices, were established to service and administer property rights in the province, each of which uh, had their own interpretation of the Provincial Registry and Land Titles Act given the uh, geographic distribution. During the 1900s, Ontario became Canada's economic engine, population more than quadrupled, and the demographic profile shifted to 85% urban. Development of land became intense, and like most jurisdictions, uh, development fueled surveys, transfers, and mortgages, which in the registry world fueled paper, paper, and more paper. This in turn put significant pressure on the urban registry offices in particular. In, in Ontario, uh, a real estate transaction does not close until you actually register the transfer in the registry office. In other words, uh, you don't get the keys to your house if you don't get registered on your Friday afternoon by your lawyer. In the 1980s, with population and the economy booming, the land registry system was not coping. It was bursting at the seams with paper, staff, and uh, customers. We were actually setting up tents in parking lots where, uh, where offices could extend their services and uh, lawyers and conveyancers would come to register. Register was consistently missing the legislative timeline to complete transactions. And in a period of intense development, this, uh, this created exposure to, uh, for the province for properties managed under the Torrent system and was potentially putting confidence in the land registry its system itself at risk. Uh, and confidence and trust is fundamental to land registry services. By the 1980s, roughly 50% of the provinces, uh, the properties in the provinces were titles and 50% were still under the deed system. Registry staff and legal community had to maintain two legislative administrative systems and workflows, as well as the expertise uh, that would be prescribed by each to, to manage them. Again, it also meant that uh, those who held interest in land did not have equal rights uh, and protections provided by the province. Uh, some were able to rely on a provincial guarantee, while others simply had to rely on their lawyer. 
So in the mid-1980s, government concluded that uh, the inconsistency of rights, the increasing cost of the service, and the decreasing level of service was creating too much risk for what would be considered a critical piece of economic and social infrastructure. So to address uh, this, the government created a vision for real property administration in Ontario that planned to leverage uh, the newly emerging information technology capabilities. And that vision was to afford all property interest holders the same protections and benefits uh, by proactively converting the deeds properties to a qualified title under the Torrent system, create an electronic parcelized ownership database for every title in the province with an integrated electronic workflow to enhance the efficiency of the, uh, the registry staff, and coincidentally create a digital parcelized geospatial uh, map fabric as an index to the property records, as well as an expandable database uh, for property attributes that could inform, uh, help inform public policy. Finally, it included a long-term vision to automate the real property document creation and registration process. Today, some know this as e-conveyancing. Uh, now, many jurisdictions in the 80s were, uh, were building title databases, and uh, so that was not uh, that unique. What I think was unique was at the time, uh, the decision to convert millions of properties, property records from a deed system to a, uh, a title system as a starting place and then envisioning a world where the end-to-end -end land transaction would be paperless, automated and conducted remotely uh, was unique. And while it was understood that the effort to attain this long-term vision was large, uh, the government did not know at the time that the scope and magnitude of the vision would become much greater than anticipated. And this, in turn, would drive the need to be innovative in the way in which that vision was uh, achieved. Initially, the land registry took, uh, took on uh, attaining the vision on themselves and started by designing and developing the Polaris land titles database and operating system. They did this successfully. And then to support uh, the records conversion, they uh, developed enabling legislation and procedures to streamline the process to search a deeds property, parcelize it, automate it, and certify it under, uh, under the Torrent system. Unfortunately, after a series of pilots, the title, land titles team concluded that the cost, difficulty, and resourcing to convert and map almost uh, 4 million titles and the complexity of the desired enabling information technology, as well as the related investment to enable all of that, exceeded the government's capacity. So to their credit, uh, to the government's credit, they did not reduce the scope of the vision they were trying to achieve. They looked for an alternative model to achieve the vision and concluded that a new trend in public-private partnerships for hard government infrastructure might actually be adopted to a soft infrastructure environment. Uh, environment. So government saw an opportunity for, private sector, uh, for a private sector partner to bring capital, discipline, competency and capacity in surveying, technology and process optimization, as well as bring a commercial lens to customer service and to market uh, newly created data. Again, to their credit, they anticipated that unlocked value in land registry would be released and that this could be captured and retained by government, but also shared with a private sector partner to accelerate that vision. And in 1991, Terranet was created as a 50-50 partnership between the Ontario government and, the pri and a private sector consortium. Terranet and the private sector were expected to bring the capacity and the expertise to accelerate the conversion of titles, drive IT solutions innovation, allow government to, uh, to guide and government project outcomes, but still remain focused on processing day-to-day -day land registry uh, records and then provide the capital and be motivated through an economic model that maximized and accelerated the benefits of automation to land registry and its customers. It took two tries to get the right consortium, but ultimately a private, the private sector owners were comprised of survey firms, legal firms, technology firms, all backed by capital that committed the required funds up front to the province. However, a clear vision capital and experience was not a guarantee for long-term partnership success, so why did it ultimately work? Clear accountability of roles, rights and decision-making, and the adherence uh, 
to these trickled down from a joint TERNAP board that had equal representation from government and the private sector partner, as well as independent expert uh, members. TERNAP would be accountable to meet performance and production criteria that included quotas, timelines, and quality, of, and quality for records conversion. The government continued to own the data and certify the title using the system that TERRANET would deliver. TERRANET, on the other hand, designed, operated, and owned the system within the, uh, which the data resides. The, this created a symbiotic uh, reliance on one another and a shared and aligned uh, view of the customer. And while TERRANET retained fee revenue, government re retained fee control. So fees were predictable. Um, and, uh, and grew at a pace that was uh, known to the customer base. Once critical match mass was reached on the number of parcels automated, Terranet could commercialize the data, but government had the approval rights uh, from a privacy perspective and a market perspective. Terranet uh, was only compensated by, re uh, by retaining statutory fees on automated properties. In the early stages, this motivated the company to focus uh, on simpler land titles, properties generally found in high turnover urban areas. Government also set performance standards for system availability, the rate at which properties needed to be con converted, and data integrity for those properties, all of which had significant penalties attached. So you had the combination of uh, revenue upside and performance downside, which motivated Terranet to successfully standardize the processes and the performance standards for title certification staff uh, in a unionized environment, and uh, having been around the world, I can tell you that's not easily done uh, in the complex world of land registry. While this model drove revenue to Terranet, uh, which would be used to fund more conversion, it also allowed government to process records more quickly uh, due to the advantages of automation. Given the long-term nature of the arrangement, it was important that government uh, was not fettered in making policy or legislative changes uh, that might need to be reflected in the systems that Terranet was maintaining on their behalf. So a comprehensive governance structure was established and evolved uh, to monitor contractual performance and customer service. Uh, but more importantly, it was a commitment to dedicate the right talent and decision makers that facilitated the ability for the regulator and Terranet to work collaboratively on advancing the vision uh, being innovative and uh, adapting to new needs uh, within the marketplace and uh, within government, and to jointly engage stakeholders and customers, and I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. A fund was established and, uh, and collaboratively annual planning process, so Terranet would fund on an annual basis any changes government wanted to the system, uh, which could be driven from an operational perspective or by legislative changes, uh, and uh, I'd say the most significant of which, w of which was uh, a move towards uh, reducing fraud, property fraud, and enabling that with, uh, with systems checks um, in the 90s. I believe another key to the success of Terranet was that from the beginning, it was not singularly uh, private sector in composition. Terranet was seated uh, with government board members and uh, the voluntary transfer of government land title staff over to the company when it first started. Uh, and to this day, we continue to recruit and retain a contingent of uh, both government and more specifically land titles capabilities uh, and DNA in the organization. Having government representation at the, at the board level in the first decade and hiring former deputy ministers, uh, or sorry, deputy registrars, uh, not only allowed the company the credibility to engage and contribute uh, to the transformation in a true partnership with government and stakeholders, but it also allows us to, uh, to understand and work with the government within a government context. It appreciates that public interest as a is a business interest. A conversion project that was supposed to take roughly 10 years uh, took 17. But that was because the number of properties and the complexities of those properties were underestimated in the 90s or the 80s. Despite this, by 1999, critical mass was reached and uh, with the busiest and largest counties automated and uh, converted to land titles. So in 1995, anticipating success, Terranet and the province set about to introduce the electronic remote registration system. But the vision did not just see the automation of land registry processes as they existed today. It also envisioned uh, the reform of land registry practices 
policies and legislation by moving away from the submission of evidence uh, to, use, uh, to the use of legal statements. Government collaborated with Terranet, but they actually led the engagement of stakeholders in this endeavor. And it became a joint effort with the Law Society of Upper Canada and the Bar Association to reform and change the real property practices uh, with, with a goal to rely more heavily on the legal profession, uh, reduce property risk, and uh, create a more efficient marketplace. The legal community was engaged and allowed to influence, which uh, ultimately turned them into champions of change when we rolled out the system. We worked closely with the government to design and develop the system based on the reformed uh, and more efficient workflows, supported by auto, auto certification, or sorry, auto signatures, online collaboration between parties, including the registry office, the auto population of title details from that automated database into the electronic documents so that you knew that that information that was being submitted could be checked and would be right, uh, as well as uh, being able to be automatically uh, abstracted and, uh, and registered without human intervention. Prior to the launch, uh, Terranet and the government together uh, delivered a comprehensive change management program to ensure that the community was aware, supported, and trained, and as mentioned, the legal community was in uh, support led by the, the Law Society. And in 1999, Terraview became the world's first digital land registration system, and it immediately transformed the practice. After the successful launch of TerraView and with the records conversion uh, nearly complete, the government sold its 50% interest in Terranet in 1993 to its partners. Three years later, we went public uh, through an IPO. Uh, the government participated and, uh, and saw a return on investment. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, in 2008, Terranet was taken private by a pension fund and is now operating the electronic land registry system for the province under a 50-year concession arrangement and uh, has strict performance and customer service requirements, including a contractual commitment to maintain the registry in a modern state. But above all else, the governance regime that provides clear accountabilities, promotes joint strategy, and the funding and collaboration to achieve it remains the underpinning of, uh, of success. The province's original equity investment in Terranet was that actual Polaris system that they built in the 80s, which was valued at less than $30 million. But since the province divested and over the life of its relationship with Terranet, its return uh, on investment uh, received in hard proceeds, so these are you know, checks being cut, will exceed $4 billion. $6.4 million parcels uh, have been automated and converted. Um, and 99% of documents are created and registered electronically today. This is in an environment where the properties, the number of properties have doubled, transactions uh, have increased by 25%, uh, and uh, the land registry in Ontario, its footprint's been reduced by 75% uh, through the use of public kiosks. While land registry staff have been reduced from uh, anywhere between 1,200 to 1,400, depending on uh, the time of year, uh, they've been reduced down to 200, uh, and, uh, but the backlogs have gone from 20 days down to one day. And finally, customer service satisfaction is in the top decile, and we measure that regularly. Uh, this has been a journey, not a journey, this has not been a journey without its challenges. Um, it, they, they always are. But a commitment to the vision and the innovative business model uh, has transformed land registration in Ontario. Terranet continues to deliver e-conveyancing uh, property risk and realtor solutions across Canada and has recently entered into a 30-year concession with the province of Manitoba where once again we are faced with paper, paper and more paper and we'll start that transformational journey once again. Thank you. <laughs>